Hello, and welcome to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. I am your guest host, Greg. I'm Steve. I'm the other guest host. Yes, uh, we're we're Greg and Steve. We're from the Lipstick Panel, the the rock band Lipstick. We host a podcast called the Lipstick Panel. Joe and Caleb have been on our show a couple of times, and there was a game that I really wanted a review of on UFF that they didn't feel like playing, and it kind of counts as a mobile title. So we're doing a guest episode for you. Sneaky of them. How sneaky of them. Now for for. Regular UFF listeners, you're probably wondering, who are these assholes that are guest hosting UFF? I guess they're in some band called Lipstick. I don't really care about them. You know, what credentials do these guys have to talk about Final Fantasy? So, allow me for a little bit of a dick wagon moment as I list off the Final Fantasy games and related games I have completed. In the main series, Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... 7, 8, 9, 10, and 12. Spin-off and related games I have completed. Final Fantasy II Soul Rebirth. Final Fantasy IV Interlude. Final Fantasy IV The After Years. Final Fantasy X-2. Final Fantasy Tactics. Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Final Fantasy Tactics A2. Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Final Fantasy All the Bravest. Chrono Trigger. Chrono Cross. Xenogears. Chocobo Racing. Urguys. Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts 2, Super Mario RPG, Brave Fencer Musashi, The Bouncer, Beat 4 Chrono Trigger Fan Games. The Bouncer. The Bouncer. (laughs) Yeah, Beat the Bouncer. I've played a lot of The Bouncer, actually. It's not very good, but I beat it. I had a friend who uh, who had it. I still own it. I had a friend who had it in high school, and he beat it, and I would go over to his house, and he would beat me up in it. Uh, But it had such excellent ragdoll physics that I had a great time, just like... Watching myself get kicked downstairs. Do you want to play the bouncer later? Maybe. <laughs> Chrono Trigger fan games I've completed. Crimson Echoes, Prophet's Guile, and Chrono Altar. And as far as Square games, I have played, but not yet completed. Final Fantasy... Th- so, you know, played these over the course of my life. I'm not actively playing all these. You know, some of them are like, like friends' houses and stuff, but I've at least touched or played a portion of these games. Final Fantasy XIII, Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core, Final Fantasy VII Dirge of Cerberus, Final Fantasy XII Revenant Wings, Vagrant Story, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Rings of Fate, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Echoes of Time, Final Fantasy The Four Heroes of Light, Final Fantasy Dissidia Opera Omnia, Final Fantasy Dissidia, Mobius Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, Final Fantasy Record Caper, Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days, Kingdom Hearts Union X Cross, Kingdom Hearts Recoded, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, Dragon Warrior Monsters, Star Ocean, Secret of Mana, Musashi Samurai Legend, and Busido Blade 2. I also played Terra Battle, it kinda sucked, I know that's Mistwalker, but related. And Final Fantasy movies and shows I have watched. Final Fantasy V, Legend of the Crystals, Final Fantasy The Spirits Within, Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, Final Fantasy VII Last Order, Final Fantasy XV Kingslave, Final Fantasy XV Brotherhood, and I do plan on watching Daddy of Light after this. So, I've got some familiarity with the series, I know my shit, for people who care about, you know, my music credentials, I was in an orchestra for a little bit done stuff with guys and Warrant and Quiet Riot, but you don't care about that. You just care about the Final Fantasy games I played. That's Are you all that still matters. listing every single video game you've ever played? No, I'm, I'm done listing the Final Fantasy games I played, but those are my credentials. Steve played a little bit of FF6 and Super Mario RPG, and that's about it. I also played a lot of The Bouncer, uh, it turns out, and I've like glanced at a bunch of these games. I feel like I might have tried one round of Blitzball while watching a friend play the game all night. Final mm-hmm. Fantasy X, of course. But yeah, there you go. Those are our credentials as guest hosts for UFF. We are going to be reviewing Final Fantasy II Soul of Rebirth. Dun, dun, dun. For those unfamiliar with it, Soul of Rebirth is a post-game bonus mission added to Final Fantasy II in the GBA, PSP, and mobile versions of the game that offers additional story content that helps flesh out the world of the game a bit more. I would call it very storied content. <laughs> The game, it's, a, it's, not, it's not a sequel, it's a, it's a midquill. It takes place during the events of the final dungeon siege in the original FF2. 
also throughout basically the entire course of the game, right? Uh, no, I... Because it, it's... Start, I guess, okay, so the first character shows up mm, right after, like, uh, what's his name, dies right during the final dungeon crawl or right before it, right? Uh, yes, Rickard dies right before the final dungeon crawl. No, so. not Rickard. Uh, what's his name? Minnow? 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 No, he dies a little bit before that. Okay, so, like, that's when the game starts. But, like, R- they find Rickard almost immediately, so I think it starts... But it, it starts with Minru right after he right. died. Well, 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 we'll get to that. So, so I don't know. It's I think it's interjected throughout the plot of the main game. Uh, uh, I I don't know about that necessarily, but you know I'm gonna I'm gonna say no, and I'll explain why when we get to the story section. Look, there has to be fighting and yelling, uh, just because it's us on Ultima Final Fantasy. That's that's even true. If, even if they're not here, you uh, to be mad that we're playing the shop theme, right? <laughs> oh, there it is. G- Greg doesn't know this, but I'm gonna go back in and post and just have the shop theme going through the entire episode. I'm actually the one who's gonna go in and post and edit it. So <laughs> I'm the one who's gonna mix it. So you're gonna edit it, and there's gonna be random jumps in the shop theme. It'll be extra annoying for everyone. <laughs> yes. Uh, for for those we we did we've done three episodes with Joe and Caleb. We did the Final Fantasy one soundtrack with them, the Final Fantasy two soundtrack with them, and Megadeth's Rust in Peace. And there is disagreement on pretty much all of those things yeah uh steve is a big fan of the shop theme from final fantasy one and the unused shop theme from final fantasy two so and good. he doesn't like megadeth so basically steve is the anti joe and caleb and i'm somewhere in between the, the three of them keeping the podcast together for the kids right so just just to uh, you know continue with the with the intro i was trying to do before we got off on the tangent <laughs> So the, the the story of the game revolves around four characters from the story of Final Fantasy II, Minwoo, Scott, Joseph, and Rickard, who died over the course of the original game. Final Fantasy II, the original game, is about a group of rebels taking down an evil empire. And the four main characters of this game are heroes who died for the sake of the rebellion, who died during the course of that game's journey. Minwoo is the white mage guy with the, the awesome turban. He, he died helping the heroes obtain the ultimate magic Ultima. Scott was uh, not a playable character. He's the Prince of Kashwan who died early on in the game. So Hold not him. appearing in this film? Well, no, he, he appears in the game. So they talk to him in the game on his deathbed is when you meet him because he was preventing an invasion of the Empire, got wounded in battle, and that's where you talk to him. So he's not a playable character. So he's new in this. You're really serious about correcting all my snarky jokes here, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. If for people who- Steve, you can't you can't make jokes that aren't accurate to the plot of the game. I'm trying to give some in case people are actually interested in, to, in what this game contains. I'm trying to give them a little bit of that. I'm going to trust you for the snarky jokes and me to. I think once I get past my intro, I will be willing to make more snarky jokes. Well, you just treat this as like that logic puzzle where the you're trapped in the maze and they're going to execute you. And there's the two guards, one of whom always speaks truth and one of whom always speaks falsehood. It's just, you know, the puzzle's pretty easy to solve <laughs> right. in that I think Greg you... is clearly the one who always speaks falsehood. <laughs> uh, uh, he right. would recommend you take the left path. So uh, <laughs> we've, got, uh, we've got Joseph, the big, bald, tough guy who died holding, uh, holding back the boulder that was going to crush the party. The monk. The monk, yes. And we've got Rickard, the last of the dragoons, a.k.a. the first of the dragoons in the series, who died distracting the evil undead emperor so the party could escape. So Soul of Rebirth focuses on their experiences in the afterlife and their role in assisting the heroes in the final battle from beyond the grave. I, le- I left a spot for a snarky joke. Oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 I thought you were still doing intro and didn't want snarky jokes. Uh, well, I figured you were going to do them anyway. So I'm like, <laughs> I, I, wait, is he, is he going to do it? Is he just going to fucking do it? Only when it's uh, upsetting to you. So, so what you're doing is you're waiting for me to not want the snarky jokes, and that's when you put them in. Uh, right. And then when I leave you the long pause to put them in, you're like, fuck you, Greg. I'm like a snarky joke ninja. <sighs> A class which I don't believe appears in this game. Uh, n- not quite. Um, so we're Closest follow- is the monk. We're, we're, we're following the format of UFF, so let's get into some development history. Uh, so there's really not a ton of development history for this game to be found online. The original FF2 came out on the Famicom, a.k.a. Japanese Nintendo, in December of 1988. 
In 2001, the game was remade for the Japanese handheld system Wonderswan Color, and an enhanced version of the Wonderswan Final Fantasy II was ported to PlayStation, along with the Wonderswan port of FF1. Just waiting. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about technology. I'm, I'm invested. <laughs> the, the new ports uh, featured the original music of Nobuo Uematsu, arranged by composer Tsuyoshi Sakito, who also composed a few new tracks for the enhanced releases, and big fan of this guy. He did one of my favorite games, Brave Fencer Musashi. Just excellent composer, so his new pieces I dug a lot, even if they didn't necessarily fit in with the rest of the game. Did uh, SOR include new songs? Or new new compositions. I, I noticed there were a couple that like oh like I recognize that song from when we reviewed the soundtrack of the main game. You know, honestly, it's been a little while since I played SOR, but from what I remember, I think some of the new compositions did make it in. Nice. So the the first port of Final Fantasy II to contain the bonus game Solar Rebirth was the 2004 Game Boy Advance re-release of Final Fantasy One and Two called Dawn of Souls. The new package was kind of named after Soul of Rebirth. That was the big new feature was, hey, here's this additional post-game content. Featured entirely new dungeons, a new town to explore, uh, additional story content, and a very brutal level of difficulty to challenge hardcore players. Soul of Rebirth has since reappeared as a feature in multiple ports of Final Fantasy II, including the PSP and mobile versions of the game, so it has retained its place in the canon of FF2 as essential for any re-release of the game. The PSP and mobile versions have smoother, enhanced graphics than the GBA version of the game, which shares a lot of features from the PlayStation port. Let's get into story. Everyone is dead! Everyone on Earth is dead! Everyone is dead and we don't care! Everyone is dead! Everyone on Earth is dead! Everyone is dead and we don't care! Alright, story. Everybody's dead. The game begins with Minwoo, the heroic white mage of Finn, waking up in a mysterious cave trying to figure out where he is. He knows he is dead, but isn't sure where he is. He hears the sound of a distressed voice and quickly finds Scott, the Prince of Kashuan, and brother of the Final Fantasy II playable character Gordon. And apparently look-alike, because he gets them confused. Yes, Minwoo and Scott defeat a few soldiers, and then talk about how they're both dead, and how they think they're in the Jade Passage, the passage to hell, because they both have killed a lot of people and just assume they're in hell. <laughs> they also talk about the war effort and how things are going for the living, which is really weird, because once you're dead, you kind of think, isn't this irrelevant? Right, you're like, point? well, I guess I'm on my way to hell. I hope all of my friends are also ensuring their own passage to join me there one day by killing Imperial soldiers. Yeah, I mean, it, like, once you find out the afterlife is a thing, that kind of makes life a bit irrelevant. Like, hey, oh, it turns out I exist. Well, I guess that is, there's no issues. All right, I'm cool. Yeah, all those things that I fought for, suddenly I don't care. Yeah. Uh, Order of the Stick actually addresses that at one point. One of the characters is dead and goes to the afterlife, and he talks about uh, how it's it's a very motivating thing, is that uh, people in the world that they exist in, because they know there's an afterlife and that they'll get their just rewards, they're motivated to actually uh, pursue their goals in, in the world because they know that, like, worst case scenario, if they're off doing something heroic to accomplish something great they die and then they go to a nice pleasant afterlife where they're rewarded for it so it's like valhalla where like i'm just gonna make sure i'm really freaking awesome uh sort of it's a much more complicated valhalla actually is one of the afterlife it's it's D, &D based so there's all the D, &D afterlifes to make nerds. things nerds as we talk about final fantasy 2 soul of rebirth yeah because the people who made final fantasy never played D, &D. <laughs> <laughs> or watch star wars yeah so the duo of Minwoo and Scott find the blacksmith Joseph, who is being confronted by the evil General Borgen, boss from the first game. In life, Joseph was an ordinary citizen who joined in the rebellion to assist the main characters of FF2, but he ended up being killed by General Borgen with a giant boulder, and Borgen is there gloating about how he's going to torment Joseph for his failure for all of eternity. So, I mean... As one does. Yeah, I mean... I mean, if you're a zombie pirate, what else are you going to do? If, if like, I'm going to torture this bald dude. If you're a zombie pirate in hell, like, sweet, I'm going to torture somebody. I mean, you know, makes sense, consistent, nothing's out of character yet, nothing OOC. So Minwoo, Scott, and Joseph team up to defeat Borgen, and then chat a little bit about their deaths and continue to fill in each other about the events of the war, which still doesn't matter. You know, Joseph being like, hey, you know, how's everything going with the guys? Like, 
I don't know, I'm dead, but last I checked, they got Ultima, so that's cool, I guess. I mean, if I sacrificed my life to save some people so that they could continue with some task that we were all working on together, I would be pretty annoyed if somebody else showed up in the afterlife and were like, oh yeah, the thing you were working on? Nah, they just sort of gave up on that. Like, yeah. you died for nothing. I'm like, well, you know, I guess that makes sense. That would be the first thing you'd ask about. Like, hey, how's everything going? Was, I, was my death not in vain? It'd be good, uh, it'd be good if that was a thing. Yeah, you know, you, you check in with the people who died after you. And like, hey, wh- what's the update? How is that going? I went from being like a dude with a family who, uh, you know, was alive to apparently being tortured by zombie pirates in hell. So I'd like to think that wasn't for nothing. <laughs> So Min Woo, Scott, and Joseph, they decide they're going to start searching for answers about where they are, and they find the dragoon Rickard, who is fighting the roundworm. You know they make a pill for that. They, they do make a pill for it's, that. It's supposed to be for dogs, but, you know, if you need it, you need it. Well, the funny thing about the roundworm is that thing is from original FF2, when Rickard is inside Leviathan, that thing is a giant pain in the ass because that's what's preventing him from escaping. So essentially a giant tapeworm is Rickard's worst enemy. <laughs> All right, I'm into it. Also, pain in the ass, huh? Yes, yes. Digestive parasites. Yes. But um, but um, pun intended. So the so he's you know it is interesting how Joseph and Rickard are sort of going through their version of what hell is to them. So for Joseph, his version of hell is being tormented by Borgen for all eternity. And for Rickard, his version of hell is like, shit, I'm still fighting this fucking roundworm because Rickard was trapped inside Leviathan, I think, for years and couldn't get past the roundworm despite all his grinding. Hmm. Like, I have been trying to level up so much and I cannot get past this boss. What does one grind on whilst in the belly of a Leviathan? Other random monsters that Leviathan ate. All right. It's a hungry fish. So, Rickard cannot defeat the round worm on his own, but the other, the other party members... Uh, Wait, did he, was he trapped there by himself, or did he team up with all the other cool people who've been swallowed by Leviathans? So, so I feel like in, Noah, Princess Rosella, and Pinocchio would be a pretty great party. In OG FF2, they build an entire town inside Leviathan's stomach because so many people have been eaten by Leviathan, but Rickard's the only dude who can kick ass. But then when the main party, Ferion, Maria, and Guy get sucked in, they team up with Rickard to escape. But I think they leave everyone else there, I don't remember. I guess it's their home now, right? Yeah, and hey, you know, you don't want to leave your home. But yeah, there is, there is that little bit of, you know, story symmetry of people assisting Rickard in defeating the roundworm so that he can finally escape. Did I say Noah? I meant Jonah. I ruined my own joke. Uh... It's okay. So after, after the party, the, the dead party, defeats the round worm, they discuss their shared bonds with Firion, Maria, and Guy, and muse that there must be some reason why the four of them have connected in the afterlife. And so the, the four of them team up and find their way out of the, the passage, out of the first dungeon, through a warp panel, and find their way to the town of McCannon. Now, at first the party, you know, still believes they're in hell, but then they notice there's a bunch of little kids running around in this town. Like, wait, hold on. Hell shouldn't have a bunch of little kids. Like, I know kids can be assholes, but they're, they shouldn't be in hell. There, I, guess, I guess this is purgatory. The Catholics were right. So Do they, Catholics exist in a Final Fantasy II universe? Uh, I mean, they got rid of the crosses for a lot of the, the ports because they didn't want to make Christians upset. Hmm. So, a a hard maybe on that. That's a hard maybe. So, the party is exploring this town of dead women and children, and then they find Sid, Tobol, and other rebels from the game, who explain that they helped build this town when they found all these souls wandering around, and they suspect that they aren't in hell because... You know, there's women and children, so they're like, this probably isn't hell. We don't know where we are, but we don't think it's hell. Now, this is where this uh, this game can diverge based upon how you play it. It's based on if you remember to go through both portals. Right. So, if you go through one of the warp portals, the party will find a duplicate Chamber of the Seal, a mirror of the place where Minwu died so that the heroes could obtain the Ultima spell. Minwu breaks the seal again, but this time survives because he's already dead. You can't die twice, suckers. That which is dead cannot die. Damn straight. So the party enters the chamber. Can summon Cthulhu, though. (laughs) 
So the party em- enters the chamber and attempts to claim Ultima, but they're met with a guardian of the spell, the Ultima Weapon. The party defeats the monster if you've done enough grinding and then obtains the Ultima spell. The party then returns to McCannon and uses the other warp panel, which Minwoo believes leads to Pandemonium, the Palace of Hell. After going through a series of intense battles, the group reaches a throne room where they encounter Emperor Mateus, who appears different than before. He explains that when he died, he split into two halves, a light half and a dark half, and that he wishes to atone for the sins of his evil half and ask for forgiveness. He explains that they are an Araboth, the passage to heaven, and offers the party eternal life and the ability to let their souls rest. But then visions of the hero's loved ones appear before them and tell them not to be fooled by Mateus. So they flip him a giant middle finger and tell him to kiss their asses. <clears throat> and then they proceed to royally beat the shit out of Emperor Mateus in heaven while the hero characters, Furion, Maria, Guy, and Leon, fight evil Mateus in hell. So there's evil light Mateus in heaven and evil dark Mateus in hell. And both parties, according to the canon of this game, are fighting him at the same time. And that's how they conquer him is they both kick his ass simultaneously. So I haven't read the FF2 novelization, but I guess according to that, Mateus simultaneously conquered heaven and hell when he died. Which, I mean, is pretty metal. Yeah. Like, second game in the series, like, yeah, I just, you know, overthrew God and Satan. Fight me, I'm the final boss. Like, that's a pretty epic final boss. Yep. But, you know, we can't... It's also a pretty epic power vacuum left behind after you finish killing him. Oh, my goodness, yes. This this game needs a sequel. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's a JRPG, so you kill the guy who killed God and Satan. And after the heroes defeat Mateus... He spews off some shit about how the cycle of violence will never stop, yada, yada, yada. And then the hero's like, nah, man, the new generation, those kids we died and, you know, protecting, they've got this. They're going to end the cycle of violence because the cycle of violence can end. These kids are going to end the cycle of violence because we helped them get really good at violence. And then Hold up. The, <laughs> the, the last scene of Soul of Rebirth shows the final scene of Final Fantasy II play out, but this time... With, with the ghosts <laughs> You beat me to it, that's right. <laughs> that, that was exactly what I was going to do. <laughs> but yeah, with the, with the ghosts of the characters you just played as, watching the ending being like, yeah, these kids, they've got this. Everything's going to be okay. The kids are all right, and then the who kicks in, and... The end. So, Steve, what do you think of the story in this one? Uh, so here's the trick is I went into this having not actually played Final Fantasy 2. Yeah, this is then, the only Final Fantasy game you've completed is Final Fantasy 2 Soul of Rebirth. It's true. And um, since this was the, you know, extra difficult new game plus mode, uh, I went into this not having any sort of preparation or skill set for playing it and only having about one evening to really try to get through it, which meant that I was cheating my way through it. Uh, so... I didn't have all the backstory that got me into this other than having watched a YouTube video or two and then I was cheating so I didn't really have that much of a connection to all of the characters and was just sort of burning through things as fast as possible. It seemed mostly pretty good. I was a little thrown by the whole thing where like, the Emperor is going to offer you eternal life and all you have to do is forgive him. And I was like, I feel like, especially when you phrase it as like the Emperor, they're trying to break out of this cycle of never-ending violence, and somebody's like, hey, you need to forgive me for the evil things I did. Yeah, that's how you break out of the cycle of violence, is somebody has to be the one who says, yes, I will accept the burden of... No, how you break out of the cycle of violence is you kick that dude's ass, and then violence is over. (laughs) (laughs) You kick everyone's ass until there's no one's asses left to kick yours, and then violence is over. Yeah, no, like... Eventually, breaking the cycle of violence requires uh, somebody who is victimized, you know, 14th hand to uh, forgive their their aggressor. And they just lobbed that softball over the plate and they like the, the batter dropped his bat and caught the softball and then charged the mound. <laughs> <laughs> Through the softball. In Through the, the softball. Face, right back. And then proceeded to punch the guy while he was on the ground. <laughs> Kick a bunch of dirt on him. But I think it's... What I like about it is, is how the character 
of the Emperor, who is actually generally considered by Japanese fans to be one of the better villains in the series. Like, he's kind of forgotten in the West, but in Japan, he's one of the top guys. What, that game that didn't get published for basically ever uh, in this country? They We forgot about the villain from it? Yeah. Weird. Yeah, weird. Oh. But I I think it's it's good because it shows that that character is just supposed to be untrustworthy and how, oh, what he's saying makes sense. Like, you should forgive, but there is, I think, something to be said about the instinctual. Some dudes just want to watch the world burn. Just, you know, you can't necessarily negotiate with the Joker. Like, yes, you should forgive. Unless the dude's a total asshole, in which case you do gotta kick his ass. Like me, my philosophy is generally, don't fight unless you need to, and then if you need to... Whoop some fucking ass, bro. Yeah, I suppose it's it's possible there was some context that I didn't get having not played the game that would suggest that this was um deceitful. Uh, yeah, that this was a feint and that uh yeah, I guess I didn't get any real sense as to what the emperor was going to accomplish by either being forgiven or beating these guys. Cuz it's not like they said, "Oh, we don't forgive you. Now we're going to kick your ass." It was they said, mm, no, we don't forgive you. And the Emperor said, all right, I guess that means I got to murder all you guys. And so, like, what is he attempting to accomplish by either getting them to not fight him peacefully or by fighting them? You know, as someone who's watched a decent amount of anime and read Japanese literature, what I imagine he's doing is trying to lull them into a state of mind where he can erase them from existence without them noticing. Is that a thing he can do? It's never said, but the thing is, that's a trope I've seen in a lot of those stories where if they just get a character to be in a certain state of mind, they can just completely dominate them, kill them, control them, whatever it is. So that's kind of how I interpret that. I know that's very loose and not explained very well. Yeah. But I'm I'm imagining if if it's not that, just wanting them to be subservient as he rules heaven. I guess that's possible, yeah. Because like, hey, just don't overthrow me. I've already got heaven. Don't ruin this for me, bro. I want to keep this kingdom. Yeah. D- did it? Did they make it clear that he had conquered heaven in the game? I didn't. I didn't really get that impression. Like, I knew he was there, but. I don't, they, it wasn't really clear that he'd taken well, he's, over. He's in the palace of heaven, sitting on the throne, and you notice mm. there's no, like, angels or god around, just a whole bunch of monsters. I thought he was in the doorway of heaven. You know, it's not very clear. Yeah, <laughs> all right. In- interpret it as you will. My interpretation, based upon what I've read of summarizations of the novelization... Cliff ki- notes of the novelization the cliff of, of a- Final Fantasy II, Spirit of Returning. Yes. Well, Soul of Rebirth. Oh, right. So, but from what from disc what, operating soul? Yeah, but from from what I've read, the the dude killed God and Satan as he split into two halves, and then just took over heaven and hell. So the dude is essentially Dio. <laughs> is that what happened to him? Yeah, I yeah. thought he just like had colon cancer. Rest in peace. Yeah. So yeah, uh, did you like the story overall, or I thought it was fine. I mean, I wasn't super invested. I burned through it a little bit. It, you know, it's it's the same sort of thing when I... It felt a lot like reading a pulpy fantasy novel. It's one of those things that I'll pick up some random novel that Saberhagen farted out in a couple of weeks, and I'll read... Not Saberhagen. Uh, Zelazny farted out in a couple of weeks, and I'll read it, and it'll be a good times for a couple hours, and then I'll promptly forgot how it ended, but I still enjoyed it. All right, well, fair enough. I mean, I, I dug the hell out of this. This is such a good supplement to the original game, which I know you didn't play, but this really makes the story so much more epic, so much more fun. I, I adored it. I thought this will, I really dug the story. I thought it was really rad, but let's move on to gameplay. So, gameplay for Final Fantasy II Soul of Rebirth, same leveling system as Final Fantasy II. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> what? In uh, Final Fantasy II, you don't level up, you or like you don't have character levels, you have stat level, and you level your stats based upon use. So, the more damage you take, the higher your HP becomes, the, the more you attack uh, with a certain type of weapon, the higher your attack 
becomes with that weapon. More often you use magic, the better you get with that particular spell. One interesting thing is the more you level up a bunch of individual types of magic, the better Ultima becomes. So if you're really hmm. good with grinding out a whole bunch of different magic, Ultima becomes really, really powerful. But here's the trick with Soul of Rebirth. You start Soul of Rebirth with whatever stats your dead characters had in your Final Fantasy II save after beating the game. And so if you're like me, where you only leveled up Firion, Maria, and Guy, the only constant characters in your party, and then burned through the rest of the game, mm. those other guys are really, really low level. I started on one of Greg's uh, save games, and it took me a long time to get the cheat codes working. And that first fight was very difficult. Yeah. The, so wait, does Scott have Gordon's stats then? I think Scott has Gordon's stats. I think that's what it is. I'm not 100% on that. I get, I'm getting a real like, you know, oh shoot, we cool, killed Boromir. All right, let's grab Faramir instead vibe from those two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. The, the, so the, the trick is j when you're just trying to recruit the four members of the party and get the hell out of that dungeon and get to McCannon... Mm -hmm. Every battle is a giant epic struggle, and you will barely survive. Yep. It is crazy how difficult it is. And one of the nice things is you can save anywhere. So you can just save wherever. So let's save after each step. Save after each battle, because the next battle might be your last. You get a game over, you have to start over again. It is incredibly frustrating just getting through that dungeon and getting your four guys together so you can barely survive. That's what God invented cheesing the RNG for. But, you know, right? But then once step, you... Step, save, step, battle started, load, step again. Battle didn't start, save. Yeah, and, you know, I think I might have just run away from most of the battles in there till I got the four guys, then got to town. And then at that point, it's just keep on going to the inn, stock up on items grind in that dungeon, go back to the end, and just back and forth, and just grind for, like, four hours to get your dude's stats up. Are the- is the cost of the inn based on your stats somehow? The cost of the inn is based upon how much damage you've taken, and how much of your magic you've used. So, if okay. you're out of magic and out of health, the inn is more expensive. So yeah, the trick Because you're gonna with bleed that, all over the sheets. Right. We've talked about this before. <laughs> So okay. the, the trick with the inn, if you want to optimize your inefficiency, <laughs> but if you want to optimize... Uh, See what you did there. If you want to optimize going to the inn, what I found works best is have a character spend all of their magic healing up the party before you go to the inn, so that way you're only restoring magic when you go to the inn. So save a guy's healing spells up until you're ready to go to the inn, have everyone back to full health and have his magic run out and then go to the end. Okay. And yeah, that way you get the end cheaper and you restore his healing magic. Because when I when I popped into the end, they were like, it's going to cost you 12,000 gold. And I was like, that is a really high number. But it probably had something to do with the fact that the cheat codes weren't working right. So three of my party members had 9,000 out of 999 health, which I'm pretty sure probably confused the system. <laughs> probably. It might have even been offering me 12,000 gold. <laughs> Steve has no shame in, in cheating. Uh, I have I was, some sh shame in cheating. Just there are times when I'm like, eh, you know what? I just want to get through this game now. Yeah. And in, in fairness, I didn't give him much time. He had like just a couple days. And he's a busy guy. He's, he's got stuff going on. The only games I don't cheat in are Minesweeper and Dwarf Fortress. So the, the thing is, I would say the gameplay is the weakest part of this, which I know for a video game you think is the most important thing. But That is pretty key. But for Final Fantasy games, the gameplay is always an afterthought for me, where I'm really interested in exploring the world, the characters, the story. And I'm like, oh yeah, and there's like battles and stuff too, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't really care about that as much, which is probably why I like this game so much, because admittedly the gameplay is pretty broken, it is very difficult surviving this first dungeon in Soul of Rebirth, and the leveling system is wonky in FF2. The encounter rate is way too high, but you know what? Whatever. I like it. I'm fine with it. I don't really care. It's fun. One of the cheat codes that I found was a higher encounter rate. Why? I don't know. I didn't... The game's encounter rate is, I think, 
I didn't turn that one on. I was like, is there a lower encounter rate? Because that's kind of... I would say the encounter rate is the biggest problem with FF2. I think if you halved the amount of ESP it takes to level up your stats and halved the encounter rate, I think the game would be much more fun. I think that's the the biggest flaw with it, personally. Ah, uh, random encounters. Always fun. I was getting some Bard's Tale flashbacks from this thing. Looking at, trying to trying to picture going through it without cheating. I was like, this is going to be the sort of thing where you just have to grind forever. And then after ages, dungeon number one won't be challenging and won't be giving you any XP. And then you're going to go to dungeon number two and immediately get your face melted again. Well, the the trick is once you grind to what I call God level, which you can do, you can do pretty quickly in a couple hours, put on like two podcasts and you're golden. But once you listen to two episodes of the lipstick panel, hey, oh, plug. But once you do that, then you go and grab Ultima and then grind Ultima just a little bit. You can get through that final dungeon. So I would say this shouldn't take including grinding should be under seven hours to beat this game. And that's including probably grinding to the point where the final boss is too easy. Mm. Because I think my save file, my final for beating it, was like 650 or something. So what was the dragon dragoon's name? Richard? Ricard. Um, Ricard. Uh, is he supposed to be worthless in the last fight? Because he was worthless in the boss fight for me. Uh, I mean, it depends on how you leveled him up. Okay. I maxed everything ostensibly i i don't know i mean the 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 trick is a lot of these characters are sort of blank slates because you can level their stats however you want because it's you just they have base stats Mm. that they're generally better at so minwu has an affinity towards white magic and so he'll do better with that naturally he'll have higher stats with that initially but if you really wanted to you could make him a bare knuckle boxer and not bother leveling his magic at all. So it's really how you want to play the game. Okay. So I think Rickard maybe has better stats as a natural fighter. But, you know, if you wanted to just have him be, you know, a useless piece of shit, you could do that too. Yeah, because he was mostly useful. He was um, he was the heavy da- he heaviest damage melee character throughout most of the game until I got to the boss fight. And then he couldn't do any damage at all. Although none of my characters could do melee damage, really, except for Joseph. Joseph did a little bit of damage. Everybody else did literally zero. So it was basically, fortunately, I'd traded out some of Minwoo's healing spells for damage spells. So it was Minwoo cheeses damage spells as much as possible. What's his name? The Red Mage just heals everybody. Joseph punches when he can. And Rickard is just passing out Phoenix Downs. Yeah, I mean, for for me, it wasn't nearly as bad because I did the Ultima side yeah. quest i just skipped that uh <laughs> i didn't realize that was the one you were supposed to go to first i just went to one of the dungeons and when i got done with it it was like congratulations game's over i was like oh i guess i better load and check out that other dungeon i mean i i do like that this post game has an optional side quest that that is that is pretty fun that for a game yeah. this short they offered a side quest but yeah uh i don't know i th- i think uh gameplay wise mostly fine like, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's a good UI, good menu system, easy enough to comprehend. Yep. That's, I mean, standard Final Fantasy setup for the most part. Yeah, just other than the, the minor gripe about the leveling and the encounter rate, mostly fine. Yeah. And it's not that the leveling system is bad, it just takes too long to do it. Mm. All right, well, let's move to music and graphics. Graphics felt a little repetitive to me, actually, now that I think of it. Just, like, they they looked fine, but the dungeons were just the same scrawl over and over and over again. Like, uh, that that first dungeon had all those side rooms that you could go into that did nothing. They just had an encounter in them. Being repetitive and boring in the sequel? I think that just means that, like, the graphics were repetitive and boring, and they decided not to fix it. uh, Like, technical limitations aren't really a thing when it comes to something like this. Like, that's always the trick with, with old video games, is if you really delve into them, the ones that were really good tended to figure out clever ways to work around their technical limitations. You know, like the, the thing in Mario, where the bushes and clouds are actually the same sprite, just to save space, and so they could have two different graphics from a single uh, from a single sprite. Well, but I guess w- when I'm looking at this, you know, I've, I've played the GBA version, I've played the PSP version, 
And there's obviously a difference in quality between 16-bit Super Nintendo version of this game, which was the original version, which is essentially a Super Nintendo rendering of it. And then the PSP version is that just a little bit more cleaned up. I mean, when they're fitting all that on a little Game Boy Advance cartridge, where they fit Final Fantasy 1, Final Fantasy 2, and this there's probably some limitations with space. I mean, there are limitations. Limitations are there, but one of the great strengths of a lot of early video game developers was working around those limitations to still deliver an immersive and interesting product, and I think they dropped the ball environment-wise in this game. Well, the, the environments were kind of boring and repetitive. You basically had three spots, and everywhere in those three spots looked exactly the same all the time. You know, I can... I can relate to that. I think because I played Final Fantasy 2 and then went to Soul of Rebirth right away afterwards, it just felt like more dungeons. And so there was enough diversity in dungeons in the in the original Final Fantasy 2 where it just felt like this is the theme for these dungeons and I was fine with it. But I understand if you've only played this bit of it, how that would be boring and repetitive. But, you know, some good things about the the graphics, I think the the character portraits look really good. The character sprites look really good yeah. in the PSP version. I think that's just a very beautiful sprite work. And so I think the sprite work is good, but yeah, there could have been maybe a little bit more diversity in the in the terrain. Uh, I will I will acknowledge that. But music, I mean top notch. I'm a big fan of both of the composers on this soundtrack. Both of them, are, I adore their work, and I've gushed over this soundtrack in our Final Fantasy II ranking episode. Please I mean, really, yeah, you just uh, just embed that episode here, pad for space. That would be a lot. That's like over an hour edited, and Joe and Caleb are going to release the unedited version with all the awkward pauses and me saying, oh, let me edit this out because the dog is barking or whatever. Yeah. But then we'll have Joe and Caleb on their own episode, at least. Uh, that's fair. I mean, I, I love the soundtrack in this game, and I do like the design of the remakes. I do think the PSP version is the best-looking version. I know that's the one that you played. I Correct. think that is the best-looking version of this game. And if I were to recommend this game to someone, it'd be the PSP version. You'd be like, hey, you, get a PSP. Right. Or, you know, if, if you have a PSP. You know, get this game. But, you know, really, if you have an old Game Boy Advance, that version's fine, too. If you have a PSP, don't try to shove the Famicom version into into that. It just won't work. It doesn't have Soul of Rebirth on it. There you go. Fail on multiple levels. All right, let's get into the legacy of Final Fantasy II Soul of Rebirth. So, according to Square's publicity department, the original Famicom release of Final Fantasy II sold around 800,000 copies. As of March 31st, 2003, the game, including all re-releases at the time, had shipped 1.28 million copies worldwide, with 1.8 million of those copies being shipped in Japan and 200,000 abroad. So, not that many in the States and otherwise. So it's mostly a hit in Japan. Big in Japan. Despite having only been released in June of that year, as of September 2007, the PlayStation Portable version of Final Fantasy II had shipped 90,000 copies in Japan and 70,000 in North America. Huh. So, m like, most of the copies in outside of Japan shipped within the first couple months, and then in Japan, it was just like a slow burn, huh? It's it's basically people bought the game when it came out, the original game, and then just people didn't buy the, the remakes and re-releases as much. So they, they, bought, they bought it when it first came out, and, you know, the, the, the situation where I have Chrono Trigger, I didn't buy it on DS or Steam because I already own it. It's so like, oh, I can buy it again? Mm -hmm. But I can play it like this. Although, ironically, I have purchased Final Fantasy II multiple times. So, there there goes that. A couple of those sales are Greg. Two of those 1.9 billion. You're welcome. I think three, actually. Bought this game three times. Dang. Different, different platforms, but three times. But despite these high sales... This game has sold the least number of copies, Final Fantasy 2, not talking Soul Rebirth, but of the main series, Final Fantasy 2 is the lowest selling. So the legacy of the game that we're talking about today, you're mostly talking about the legacy of a 
different game. Well, the reason I'm bringing up these numbers is if Final Fantasy 2 is the lowest selling of the main series, Mm -hmm. and only a small percentage of that contain Soul of Rebirth, and probably only a small percentage of people who beat Final Fantasy 2 even bothered with Soul of Rebirth, the legacy of this game is not much. Is not much. I think most people don't know about it, don't care about it. Final Fantasy 2 has a really bad reputation in the video game community as maybe the worst Final Fantasy. Dun, dun, dun. Like when people talk about the worst Final Fantasy, they usually talk about Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 11, and Final Fantasy 13. Those are usually the ones they rank at the bottom as the worst of the series. And 2 is pretty consistently at the bottom. So people generally don't like this game. That said, there are some two fanboys. I am one of them. This is kind of like the music from the Elder of Final Fantasy games, where people who are fans of the series are like, man, this sucks. Except for the weird crazies like myself who are like, man, this is awesome this is the best one but when you when talking about the legacy of this in every re-release of final fantasy 2 since this was made since solar rebirth was made that's been ported into each re-release so the psp and mobile versions have soul of rebirth so it is kind of considered an essential part of this game at this point yeah so like, well so we already made it might as well throw it in there so in in that sense It does, I think, have a bit of a legacy. I think this has warped its way into the canon of 2 as essential playing if you are bothering to play through 2 as part of the main series. I think this is a really good supplement to it, and I think it has the legacy of enriching that story a bit more, which everyone says is the best part of 2. Even people who don't like 2 acknowledge, hey, the story in that one wasn't bad. Such, Such high praise. Yeah, but let's get into... Our rankings, Steve, out of all the Final Fantasy games that you have beaten, where does Final Fantasy II Soul of Rebirth rank? Wait, hold on. Um, I guess it ranks in the spot, the the spot of the Final Fantasy game I've So beaten. it is the best Final Fantasy game you've beaten? Sure, I mean, so there, do you really want to belabor the point? We have it official. Final Fantasy II... Soul of Rebirth, according to Steve, is the best Final Fantasy game that he has beaten. Yep. And me comparing this with OG Final Fantasy 2, because the way that Joe and Caleb do it, they only rank games within the same series. So it's Final Fantasy 2 versus Soul of Rebirth. Oh, that's, all right, that's weird. Well, it, so they'll do like main series, like 1 through 15 they'll rank, but then it'll be like 7 and then 7 sequels. Oh, uh, okay. So, ranking FF2 versus FF2 Soul of Rebirth, I'm going to put FF2 Soul of Rebirth under FF2. Oh, so it's the... the, So we both technically ranked it worst in the series. Yes, we also both technically ranked it worst. Uh, So, there you have it. Soul of Rebirth, uh, the worst. I like Soul of Rebirth a lot, but I think it's it's too short for me to rank it above the original FF2. I think if there was more dungeons, just like really exploring hell, could have been a cool full-length game. But you're not in hell, so like how much can you explore hell? I guess really exploring heaven. I, I guess. Fight a bunch of angels and stuff? Yeah, that'd be pretty sick. Could be pretty cool. I would help uh, explain the plot a little bit, too, if suddenly the angels are fighting you because the emperor has pit them against you. All right, well, that is that is our review of Final Fantasy II, Soul of Rebirth. Steve, where can people find us on the internet? Uh, LipstickGeneration.com, and then basically any other platform, we're probably called Lipstick Generation, if we are there at all. We don't have a Tumblr. Uh, we don't have a live journal. At least I don't think we do. No, not to my knowledge. So this is your opportunity to start the uh, lips, official Lipstick Generation fan live journal. Good luck. All right. Well, thank you all so much, and have a good one. Peace. Have a good one. Peace.
Enjoy the grind. <laughs>